All right, so today's video might be a little bit of a quickie, but uh, I wanna look into the steering a little bit. I've done a lot of stuff to this Jeep to try to get it to drive nice on the road. And it's, you know, rather comfy. It can do about 85, 90 now, no problem, no shakes, but the uh, front drive shaft's disconnected. But my main concern has to do with the steering, especially on the highway. Well, once you get up to 70, 75, I think the uh, the wheels are making enough centrifugal force to keep the tires straight. But, uh, you know, lower speeds, especially, you know, like 55 and 60 and stuff like that, and going over bumps, dude, this thing just wants to go everywhere. It is a royal pain in the ass to keep this thing going straight down the road. So I've done a lot of stuff on the steering. The main one being this, uh, you know, Heim joint kit. So uh, this one's made by Iron Rock Off-Road. It's uh, really cool because it gives you the factory angles that you need to keep your uh, track bar and your drag link uh, parallel to prevent bump steer. So that part's good. So we got our good angles, but she's still kind of all over the place. The steering seems tight. You know, when you move the wheel back and forth, everything moves. It feels responsive. It's just all over the road. So, you know, one of them things is checking the alignment, making sure that your toe is good. That's how much your, your tires point in or point out or whatever. You want them to point in just a little bit. And I've done that. But she still handles like dirt, and the steering wheel doesn't really want to center. Well, one of the other things you can check is caster. Rather overlooked and also rather important, I'm hoping. <laughs> so over here, we have an angle finder gauge sitting on the top ball joint because that's about the only spot I could find. Now, a caster is how much your axle is tilted one way or the other. And what you want is a, a positive caster, I think it is. Basically, you want the, uh, if you have the center line here, you want the axle to be back a little bit. And what that does is it forces the wheels to, like, uh, you know, center themselves. I'm not entirely sure on how exactly the uh, the stuff does the things, but basically you want an angle. And if you don't have an angle, then it's going to be a lot harder for your wheels to center. So what we do is we take that angle finder, and um, the caster is the center line from the top ball joint to the bottom ball joint. So I figure the top ball joint should be, uh, you know, centered, because I can't really get to the bottom one. I was trying to look online and I saw some people like putting it on these flats right here, but like I get like 10 degrees difference from here to there, so I don't know if that's quite right. I don't know. But anyway, if we can line you up here. I have an angle of zero right now, if you can see that at all. And you should have an angle of six. <laughs> the factory uh, service manual says that anywhere from five to nine is good. And if you're under five, then you should uh, definitely try to readjust it so that you can get a proper number. So what we're going to do is, since we have adjustable upper control arms, we will uh, shorten them so that the pinion points down a little bit so that we get more caster. Now, this is a bit of a battle, though, because uh, you have to balance the caster angle with the pinion angle. The problem is when you start lifting a Jeep, your drive shaft angles start to get a little worse, so now the pinion isn't pointing at the transfer case. Now, since we have a double card in the front drive shaft, that means that there's two joints on one end and one joint on this end over here, we want the, uh, the pinion to point at the transfer case. It's recommended to have maybe like one degree difference, that way the front U-joint does move a little so it doesn't get stiff. But uh, yeah, for the most part, you want it to point at the transfer case. Uh, and just to, just to really bring this all together, uh, on the rear, if you had a standard slip joint, which I don't, I have a double card up here with an SYE, so it's the same as the front, you want it to point at the transfer case. And you can see this one's off by maybe a degree or two, but that's okay, because that means that joint you know gets used. Uh, but if you had a slip joint, then what you want is you want the... Uh, the transfer case output to be the same angle as the pinion. So you want flat and flat instead of angle flat. But as we change our caster, we will be changing our pinion angle. So we will be pointing the pinion down slightly away from the transfer case. But it looks like we have some, uh, some playroom here. So basically you can keep adjusting this until you get highway vibes and then maybe back it off a little bit. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like I have much room to adjust anyway. 
we're kind of at the, uh, huh. I also have control arm drop brackets and six inches of lift. So, you know, all that geometry and playing around with stuff can be a pain in the butt. But I'm really hoping that a caster change will uh, fix that. So basically we got to take this arm off and uh, adjust it and see if it drives any better. All right, these things are a pain in the butt. So on mine, these are 17 millimeter on both sides. You got a nut that has to come off and then the bolt has to come through. When you're done, it'll disconnectify and look something like that. And then I had to break that nut free. I don't know how big that was. I just used that monster. Um, so yeah, basically break the nut free until you know you get it almost all the way off and then you can use yourself a sledge to hit it through and then you you know back the knot off a little and then hit it some more so we'll do that because they like to be stubborn oh god i love working on vehicles in this in the winter Eventually you get a gap over here and then you might be able to get a pickle fork or a pry bar or something. If it's not moving, sometimes it helps to uh, loosen it on this side and that'll uh, that'll get it moving. So you can do that as well. But yeah, we're just going to try and get that out and then see if we can um, adjust it in enough to get anything better than zero. <sighs> Maybe it's a sign to go to long arms. Who knows? Okay, so now the fun part, trying to get that other bolt out. It was getting real cockeyed and crooked and all kinds of pain in the ass wouldn't fucking move. So uh, what I did was I got the bottle jack out and we're going under the spring perch. I was trying to find the most forward spot on the axle because what we're trying to do is pivot the thing back so that we can get a different angle. So by doing this, it, it was lifting the Jeep at first, but then it, it was slowly, uh, it would start cocking the thing back. So now by doing that, we can tilt the axle backwards. See? Just like so. And then uh, we could try to look at that ankle finder and uh, see what we're actually getting. But the problem is I don't think I'm going to be able to get anywhere near six because uh, I'm like almost at the uh, the end of the adjustment as is. So. Okay, so if I wanted to get six degrees caster, like so, then this is how much farther out I needed to go. Quite a bit. So, just for reference, this arm over here, I did adjust uh, nearly all the way back. And uh, we still ain't quite there, not even close. So we ain't getting that much. Well, I figure any caster is probably better than none. Hmm. Okay, so quick update. Uh, the driver's side arm was adjusted like basically all the way in. And uh, the passenger side one was a little longer. So I don't know if the frame has been over there or something's messed up. But um, yeah, I was going to swap them and see if maybe that would work, something or other. But it looks like to get any kind of caster at all... I'd have to take this out and trim a little bit off the threads and probably grind down that nut a little bit uh, in order to screw these in far enough to actually get any adjustment. And also I think this arm's a little bent because it is putting up a hell of a fight trying to get this damn arm apart just so I can, you know, do anything to it. A hell of a fight. The fuck over? Jesus. Yeah, this part, I, I, I just want to get the damn thing apart. It's pissing me off, so, yeah. Keep on fucking jumping on this. All right, all you ATF and acetone friends bugging me about this shit. Fine, we'll try it out. Well, first off, it doesn't stay in a fucking proper solution. It keeps bubbling up and not doing things. So that's one point off. It's not a stable compound. We'll go nuts. Add the secret formula. Messy stuff. All right, see a big birth has to say. That thing really fought me the whole way out, man. And for what? For what? Besides the tip, I mean, we got like some dark brown and then some gray, but I don't know, they still kind of look like threads. 
What the fuck, over? Jesus. Anyway, I guess I'm gonna nibble a little bit off the tip then. <sighs> Verdict? I was not impressed. Just the fact that it stays separated should tell me uh, more than enough. Eh. Keep trying. Okay, nibbled a little piece off right there. Put some anti-seize on there. Good old friend there. And she actually goes in pretty easy. I did it by hand. So, you might be wondering, what the heck's the point of this jam nut if the thing can't technically spin? Because you're locked on both ends, so it's not like it could loosen up. Well, uh, the point is this. To keep the end from getting all slopped out, because I guess over time it bounces around and shit like that. When you got the jam nut locked on there tight, it keeps it tight so the threads don't get all walled out. So that way you can actually take it off later. So now you know from one person to another. Lock nuts keep things from loosening up in more ways than you would think. Okay, I have a feeling that uh, now we can thread it in all the way, which is cool, but I still don't think that's enough. We're probably going to have to nibble some off the nut too. Getting the nut off is going to be tricky because the threads are messed up though, so that'll be fun. As it turns out, you can actually use these flat spots down here on the bottom of the C to get our measurement. So there we are sitting at four and a half according to um, that Iron Rock off-road thing. Maybe a little bit on five, but still. I got the bolt in, but here's the thing. That thing is threaded in literally all the way. All the way. I couldn't thread it in anymore if I tried. I had to cut, probably cut about half an inch off the threads to get that to fit. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm probably going to go to long arms pretty shortly, but I kind of want to see how this would handle just to see if caster really was making that big of a difference. So I don't know. I'm obviously not going to be able to fit that safety nut in there, so uh, this would not be a good long-term solution, but, you know, just for shits and giggles to see if it handles better. Might be worth a shot. So I guess I'm going to take that off and put it on the other side and see the length that we need. And um, see how much we got to cut off the other one. Okay, so I actually got both of them in there. This was the easiest ever because I remember having to wrestle with these real hard last time. And man, they went in like they were nothing this time. Bottle jack on each corner, man. Just jack it up till she lines up and slip her in. So easy. Just gotta get it on the edge of something. So I have these adjusted in, both of them all the way. And that one's sitting at about four and a half, maybe five degrees. And this one's sitting at like seven. So I wonder why the degrees are off. Now again, this did take a front impact, uh, about 15 miles an hour to a tree at one point. So the passenger side frame is probably a little, uh, you know, banner, not where it should be. So I guess I'm gonna mess with this a little bit to try and get the same caster, maybe? I don't know. But besides that, I guess we're going to tighten it up and, uh, you know, just take it on a test drive just to see. Again, this is not going to be a good long-term solution without those jam nuts because those things are going to wobble out. But uh, I just want to see if the caster really is what my steering issue is. So, all right, we'll tighten everything up and see how she goes. Okay, so overall, after the caster adjustment, it did drive a little bit better. So, you know, when you hit bumps, it, it didn't want to... Uh you know, wander all over the place, which was cool. It kind of did seem like it wanted to say, uh, stay more straight. So that's cool. So it looks like the caster, you know, is definitely something to look into if you're uh, having issues wandering all over the road. Something I didn't think about is when you lift the vehicle, you change the caster. So I bet you when I went from four and a half inches to uh, six inches, that's when the steering probably got a little messed up, but I didn't notice at the time. So yeah, that's why the caster was so bad, because I lifted it and forgot to adjust. Uh, now, obviously, those arms, that's not going to be a long-term solution, so you'd have to get properly sized arms or something a little longer. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. But uh, something else I found out, uh, the reason my steering was so craptastic is because the steering box bolts worked loose. I didn't find that out until a couple days ago when I had my buddy turn the wheel. This bolt was out, you know, probably a quarter inch, and you could see the whole thing moving. I'm like, oh, all right, that might have something to do with it, eh? So yeah, now with proper caster and a tightened steering box, it actually kind of goes straight and drives normal. Cool. So yeah, things to check. Caster, toe, <laughs> and your freaking steering box bolts. Alright, hope that it explains a little bit about uh, some steering geometry and your axle and all that hoopla. 
Well, best of luck.